hearty welcome to all my students hope you are all fine and safe in last class we have discussed about mesopotamian civilization from the chapter ancient civilizations of the world and in today's class the last river valley civilization we are going to discuss about that is chinese civilization as i have mentioned about the river valley civilization namely indus valley civilization egyptian civilization mesopotamian civilization and chinese civilization have originated in the river valleys right and now let's see in which river valley chinese civilization had originated the chinese civilization originated in huanggu river huanggu river huang means yellow is a reference to the fine loess sediments or the yellow wind borne clay dust that car that the river carries to the sea so that the river got its name as huanggu or yellow river the word huang means yellow it got its name because of the fine loess sediments or the yellow wind borne clay dust which the river carries to the sea so we are calling this river as huanggu or yellow river now let's move on to the first dynasty of this civilization according to archaeological evidences the first ruling family of the chinese civilization was the shang dynasty it was ruling between 18th century to 12th century bce under the rule of this dynasty the people had developed a wonderful culture by the 14th century bce the shang dynasty was overpowered by the neighboring chou dynasty the chou dynasty continued the good traditions of the shang culture and ruled till 250 bce in the chou dynasty there was a section of officials below the kings the king allotted portions of land to these officials in return for that the officials supported the king during battles in the social hierarchy or else in the social stratification the communities in the next level were the merchants and the craftsmen apart from them we can find a great majority of peasants as well in the lowest level that is in the last level of the social hierarchy were the slaves and the prisoners of war were made slaves by the kings in the chou dynasty now let's move on to the qin dynasty qin dynasty has started its rule by 221 bce and this qin dynasty has its remarkable place in chinese civilization do you know why we'll see now qin dynasty was the one which has built the great wall of china which has started to build the great wall of china the emperor qin shi huangti ordered that the walls of the northern chinese states be connected this enabled the northern walls to ward off the attacks of invaders from the north the construction of the great wall began in 7th century bce and continued till the 16th century now you can see the great wall of china in this video great wall of china it is one of the greatest site in the world the longest wall in the world and awe inspiring feat of ancient defensive architecture its winding path over rough country and steep mountains takes in some great scenery the height of the wall is about 5 to 8 meters these great walls usually had battlements flanking towers and fortresses the chinese empire consisted of many small provinces seven big states were created bringing these smaller provinces under them every state that has created thus constructed a wall along its boundary for the protection 
and the emperor Qin Shi Huang Ti was the first one who was ordered to build the walls in the northern Chinese states. And really, it is the greatest human feat in the world. The wall outposts were repaired and strengthened. The work was started in 7th century BCE and was continuing till 16th century. When the work was completed, it was stretched to more than 5000 kilometers. And it is one of the seven wonders of the world. And it is really a fantabulous architecture of Chinese civilization. Now let's learn about the military part of Chinese civilization. The Shang kings spent quite an amount of time in conquest and battles. Hence the army was in prominence. The soldiers enjoyed a dignified place in the society. Soldiers wore bronze helmets, metal armors, they were using bronze daggers, axes, bows and iron-tipped arrows. The main occupation of Chinese civilization was agriculture. The people of Shang dynasty depended on agriculture. They had a well-organized system of irrigation and they used to grow plenty of rice during their time. And the next main occupation was cotton and growing the cotton and silkworm rearing. The Chinese used to wear thin cotton dresses. They used even silk and they have engaged in silkworm rearing. Silk manufacturing was a prominent industry in Chinese civilization. The production of silk originated in China in the Neolithic age. The silk remained confined to China until the Silk Road opened at some point during the later half of the first millennium BCE. Now let's see about their contribution. Chinese used to make excellent parts and had learned to make various objects from porcelain. Different kinds of pottery appeared in different times in different regions. And they had developed a painted ceramic vase about 5,000 to 7,000 years ago from today. And they were known for making black ceramic vase. And another fine example of beautifully crafted pottery is a tricolor glazed pottery, which was belonging to Tang Dynasty. Another choice pottery that won great reputation for hundreds of years is purple clay pottery. We can see in these pictures all the different sort of pottery like purple clay pottery, black ceramic ware and even the painted ceramic vase. Now let's move on to the ancestor worship. It was a custom of the Chinese to worship their ancestors. They believed that a dead man became a spirit and that the spirit had special powers. That thus, the dead body was buried along with various wooden articles, parts, bronze vessels and other objects. The tombs of kings used to be quite large. A very important part of ancient society was when someone died, the ancient Chinese believed their spirit lived on in the afterworld. They believed their ancestor had magical past that could punish them or could help them make wise decisions. To keep their ancestors happy, they brought gifts of food and wine to special places or temples. They held many celebrations to honor their ancestors. So ancestor worship became a customary thing as well as a important celebration for Chinese civilization. Now let's move on to the art of writing. The people of China developed their own system of writing. At first, they drew small pictures on bamboo slips to express their idea. These pictures were known as pictogram. With the progress of time, further improvement was made on pictures. And the writers used to write on silk and on bamboo slips. 
The porcelain is a another contribution. It is believed that porcelain originated in China. Semi porcelain objects were in use from 1600 BCE. By the time of the Han dynasty, the porcelain had been developed. It had developed into exotic art. The ancient Chinese used to bury their dead along with the porcelain parts, animals, and the objects loved most during their lives. Porcelain, Great Wall of China, or the major contribution of Chinese civilization. I hope you all would have understood this lesson about Chinese civilization. Children, shall we move on to the question hour now? Yes. Shall I ask you the question? Which river is called as China's sorrow? The first question is, which river is called as China's sorrow? The answer is, Huangu River is called as China's sorrow. Second question, which was the first ruling family in the Chinese civilization? Answer is, Shang dynasty was the first ruling family in the Chinese civilization. Which dynasty? Shang dynasty. Shang dynasty was the first ruling family in the Chinese civilization. Third question. Who were made as slaves by the Chao dynasty kings? The Chao dynasty kings made the prisoners of war as slaves. Who were made as slaves? The prisoners of war were made as slaves by the Chao dynasty kings. And the last question, who started the construction of Great Wall of China? Chen Shi Huang started the construction of Great Wall of China. Who has started? Chen Shi Huang started the construction of Great Wall of China. Hope you all would have enjoyed this lesson children. The concept is quite difficult for you, I know. So you have to go through this video again and again. Take running notes compulsorily and watch the pronunciation properly and repeat until you are thorough with the pronunciation and read through the textbook by this, that is, we have completed the ancient civilizations of the world. All the four river valley civilizations we have learned now. Learn this chapter properly and be ready for your class test. Thank you, children.